I am reading from St. Alphonsus de Liguori, and he's speaking about priesthood. And my heart is beating fast as I'm reading this, and I'm thinking, if that's the priesthood, then I, I can't be a priest. Mm. I mean, um, I, I'm not worthy. Mm. And as soon as I thought that thought, it was like the Lord said, I know. Hello and welcome to Kept in Her Heart, where we talk about all things faith-related. I'm your host, Jenny Fuchs. Today, I'm joined by Father David Bloom from the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis. He's here to share with us about his vocation story. He learned more and more about the priesthood, and as he did, he fell more and more in love with it. Welcome, Father Bloom. Thank you. Could you just share your journey with us? Sure. Um, I grew up um, in a family of eight kids in western Minnesota. We grew up on a farm and I was number seven of eight. And uh, so I uh, went to St. Charles Borromeo Catholic Church in a small town in western Minnesota and um, very active in the parish. Um, active in pretty much everything you could be active in. So uh, now my dad was not Catholic <clears throat> and he did not actually go to mass with us. Uh, so mom uh, got all of us up and going and out the door and that's where dad really helped her because I think he wanted to see us go out the door <laughs> and uh, I think when that car was heading down the driveway he was praising God more than we were so <laughs> it was um, quiet that was an hour of quiet uh, that he had every week but uh, he was supportive of my mother in raising uh, the kids in the faith uh, there was nothing that he didn't have any concern about that, but for him personally, it wasn't something that uh, it wasn't something that uh, he was drawn to. Sure. So, um, so I would say you know went through all the sacraments, received all the sacraments, and uh, again active in in the parish. When I was in high school, I had no interest in being a priest. Um, there just was no interest, and. Uh, um, but as I got older, uh, there was, and I, as I got older and as my life in Christ was deepening and maturing, I was able to say, I am open to whatever God wants, sort of. <laughs> and um, went off to college and um, I found a lot of rich uh, resources, you know, uh, or I should say sources of faith life. And so uh, just a, a ton of friends whose life in Christ was really alive. So uh, I dated and, um, and uh, there was a, a point in time where uh, there was a wonderful relationship that I thought really had potential. And I said, Lord, uh, I can see where this is going. Uh, I, think, uh, I think this is, she might be the one. And um, if, if she's not, <clears throat> I will take another look at the priesthood. What I didn't realize is that I had never really looked at the priesthood. I had never really discerned. I had um, kind of bounced it back and forth, uh, just very lightly. I had prayed a little bit about it, but I had never really discussed it with anyone, and I had not really discerned. Uh, well, uh, the relationship uh, was put on hold and I realized that I had made a promise to God that if uh, this relationship didn't uh, move towards marriage, then I would take another look at priesthood. And one day I was opening uh, the Catholic Spirit and I turned the page and here's a picture of Archbishop Harry Flynn. <clears throat> and he says, uh, right below his picture, it says, if you're a single man between the ages of 18 and 50, and you've ever thought of being a Catholic priest, come with me on retreat, and let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart about your vocation. And I just gave out a heavy sigh. I just, like, oh. So the Catholic Spirit laid there on the counter for weeks. And finally, I picked up the phone and I called the Office of Vocations and I got signed up for the retreat. I knew that this was a way to check that box. Yeah. I could check the box and say, Lord, I said I would take a look at priesthood. I did so, and now I can move on with my life. Right. Well, 
uh, the Lord had a surprise in store for me at the retreat. The Holy Spirit was hiding around the corner. And um, when I got there, it was such a wonderful experience. It really was. And the Lord was present. Um, the talks the Archbishop gave were excellent. And one of the talks he gave was about the root of every vocation. And he said the root of every vocation is sacrificial love. And he said it's dying to self. And then he used this example uh, that spoke to me. He said, so, he said, the married man, if he has a sick child at two in the morning, gets up and helps his wife with a sick child. Yep. Um, the priest, if he has a parishioner, a spiritual child, mm -hmm. who is sick at 2 a.m. and at the hospital, he gets up and he goes to the hospital to be with that sick child, to anoint them, to be with the family, and to be with them, and possibly uh, in their last moments here on earth. And he said, it's out of sacrificial love that both men are able to do what they're doing. And both of them might want to just stay in bed, but both have to get up and serve Christ and, and their people. Yeah. So uh, that spoke to my heart and uh, the whole retreat was really wonderful. Uh, I wanted it to last longer. In fact, there was, um, there was snow that had fallen and a lot of it. And it was very light snow. And the only thing we needed to have an all out snowstorm was wind. And I was praying that the wind would come up and we'd be snowed in at this retreat. And uh, it, that did not happen. So that was the retreat um, that really sparked something in my heart. Uh, I left the retreat not knowing that uh, God would be calling me to the priesthood or not even sensing that I'm being called to the priesthood, but rather sensing that God wanted me to really be praying about this mm -hmm. and to get serious about discernment and to not take it so lightly. So I started praying more and more and I started talking to the vocation director and I started talking to other, another priest. Um, and I was praying everywhere, uh, at the ramp meter lights, uh, at work, at the copy machine, uh, at the grocery store, standing in line uh, at the checkout line. I was praying constantly, Lord, lead me, guide me, help me to know your will. Uh, speak to my heart about what my vocation is. And the Lord did that. He didn't do it like that. He didn't just, it didn't just happen. It happened gradually. And uh, so I had made a commitment when I left the retreat to take six months and pray and discern. At the end of the six months, I went on a retreat at Pachman Terrace. And in that little hermitage, uh, the Holy Spirit was working on me. And uh, when I left, I said, okay, uh, priesthood has gone from here to here. It's gone from the head to the heart. And I still don't know if God is really calling me, but if he does, I know what my answer will be. And so I continued to pray and discern. And then uh, we came around to December again, when the vocation retreat was going to happen again. Mm. And I went on the vocation retreat again. All the same talks. Everything was the same, pretty much. A whole different set of guys were there. And it was, a, again, it was a very powerful retreat. And the Lord really spoke to my heart. And now we, um, and now we get into January, and one evening I am reading from St. Alphonsus de Liguori, and he's speaking about priesthood. And my heart is beating fast as I'm reading this, and I'm thinking, if that's the priesthood, then I, I can't be a priest. Mm. I mean, um, I, I'm not worthy. Mm. And as soon as I thought that thought, it was like the Lord said, I know. I know you're not worthy. Uh, but you might be called all the same. Then we get into Lent, and it was a wonderful Lent. And, uh, and then Holy Week was very powerful and beautiful. And it was at the Easter Vigil. And I can even show you what pew it was that I was sitting in. But at the Easter Vigil, I just said, Lord, I think you're calling me to the priesthood. My answer is yes. And everything started to change and move very quickly. Um, 
And so I called a realtor and uh, listed my house and he said it'll take months to sell. It's a very slow market. Three days later, there was an offer and it was a very good offer. It was, they, they were offering more than I was asking. And he said, and that, that wasn't something that was done back then. Really? And um, so a whole set of things just came together very quickly. And then I left my job of many years and I uh, sold the house and got everything cleaned out. It was a lot of work. And um, so uh, that was my journey to the seminary. I started in the seminary in that fa the fall of that year, that same year. And, uh, never looked back um, and there were guys in the seminary who were still in a discernment mode sure. I wasn't one of them mm -hmm. um, they were kind of struggling with okay uh, is, Lord are you really calling me to the seminary are you really calling me to priesthood mm -hmm. and um, I just had complete peace so so now that you've been a priest for a number of years um, what's your favorite part of the priesthood so there's many things about priesthood that are very beautiful and wonderful. The thing that really keeps me going and the thing that is so beautiful is when I see conversion going on in someone's life. Mm -hmm. And they are moving towards Christ. They're not moving away. They're moving towards Christ. Sometimes in very difficult circumstances as well. But they're not going to let that slow them down. They are moving towards Christ. And sometimes you see this in, in the confessional. And you might not even see the person because they're on the other side of the screen, but you can sense that here is someone who is, who is really leaning into Christ. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit is working in their life. And so the conversion, conversion happens, uh, you see it in the confessional, but you see it at the hospital, you see it in the funeral procession, you see it in faith formation. You see it when you're just talking to someone one-on-one, -on -one. Yeah. and uh, it's a beautiful thing. But that's the thing in my priesthood that has really kept me going. It's the joy of priesthood, is seeing people convert more deeply to Christ. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. I love that as well. What, uh, what would be the most challenging thing for you as a priest? I suppose the most challenging thing is when people don't convert to Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the most challenging thing might be um, when you have someone who is lackadaisical about the faith, someone who is lukewarm, mm -hmm. and they're really very comfortable. And they really don't want to take additional steps and to go deeper with Christ. They don't want to be on fire for Christ. And that's, that's a challenge. Yeah. That's a real challenge. And of course, uh, it's not up to me, it's up to the Holy Spirit. And I, I invite the Holy Spirit and the Blessed Mother. Um, I invite the saints and angels to um, obtain for that person the graces that they need. Yeah. So. What did your family think when you told them that you're going to be a priest? It was really quite supportive. Um, my mother had died years earlier, mm. uh, and, uh, but my dad was, was positive. My brothers and sisters were positive. A couple of them said, uh, I'm not surprised. And so. that was my follow-up question. Was anybody surprised? I don't think so. I don't think anyone was surprised. Uh, I wish I had it with me. I, I, I'm not even sure where it is, but uh, I had a friend take a picture of me and I had a shirt and tie on, and, and I was in front of the sign that said St. Paul Seminary. And then I put that on the top of this letter, and then I wrote a letter below explaining that I would be, I would be turning my life upside down soon. Um, the house had sold, and I would be leaving my job, and I would be going to the seminary. And then I sent that, I put those letters together, and I probably, uh, put them together for about 70 people or so. Wow. And all stamped and addressed, and I put them all in the mailbox at the same time. And then I said, there's no turning back. <laughs> <laughs> so um, then that evening, then I started making phone calls. And uh, I called each family member first, and uh, then I called a few others. 
and I knew that word would get around pretty quickly. So, um, but that was kind of a, one of those turning points, you know, yeah. of dropping all those letters in the mailbox at once. Sometimes as a priest, you do get called out at night. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen every night, thank God, and it doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. Uh, people don't just need their priest, uh, you know, from nine to five. Right. And uh, so I remember, um, yeah, I remember one of my sisters after I was ordained, uh, she was surprised that, you know, I would get called out, as, you know, after hours or, <clears throat> and I said, well, there is no after hours for the priest. Um, you're always on call. <clears throat> and, but it, um, there's a whole set of times, you know, where I would get that phone call at two in the morning or three in the morning, whenever it would be. And, um, and you know, uh, Father uh, uh, Al has had a heart attack. Uh, they're taking him to the hospital. Can you meet us there? And I say, absolutely, I'll, I'm on my way. And it's such a, incredible moment because here family is coming together everybody is showing up at the same time and it's an intense time it's a time where um, people want their priest yeah. and they may be very active in the parish or they might not be but they still want their priest and uh, so you gather everyone together and you pray these beautiful prayers and I often say, now, I may break down in the middle of these prayers, and, uh, but I will regain my composure and we will complete all the prayers. <clears throat> uh, everybody's crying. There's tears, and it's, it's difficult to uh, get through those beautiful prayers without um, having to pause for a moment. But it's an incredible time. Um, we're praying together. And sometimes even the person who is dying will pray, the Our Father. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people will say, Mom hasn't prayed, or Mom hasn't spoken in three weeks, you know. Yes. And here she's praying the Our Father. And because she learned the Our Father as a small child. Yes. And it always stayed with her. This is such a intense moment and such a beautiful moment because this person oftentimes is about to see the face of God mm -hmm. and in just a few moments they will know more about God than all the theologians put together in the world yeah. because they've seen the face of God. So it's a beautiful time, it's a very profound time and as I am driving home I say, Lord, thank you for calling me to be a priest. I was able to be there for this soul and to help them across the finish line and uh, allow God to work through me to bring graces, actual grace, to his soul. And so uh, driving home, I would thank God for the gift of priesthood. But those times at the hospital, um, no matter what time of the day or night, are um, can be really beautiful and powerful times and very spiritual. Um, but um, there's something about the stillness of the night mm -hmm. as I'm driving home. There's no traffic. It's quiet. I'm driving. There's no distractions. There's just God. Yeah. And I know that the Lord worked through me at that hospital in ways that I, that wasn't me. That was the Holy Spirit working through me. And I'm so thankful that I said yes to the Lord. Amen to that. So. Amen to that. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments or questions for Father Bloom, you can put them in the comments and we'll catch you on the next video. And I will take more of that martini that you have. <laughs> Well, I got one. <laughs> I have a special blessing. <laughs>